They're not human, but they hunt human women. Not for killing, for mating. Welcome to I Hope You Suffer. <laughs> Times two. Just, uh, it was better the second time you said it. <laughs> I got through it the first time the second time. <laughs> This is episode 47 of I Have to Suffer. My name is Nathan. I'm Kit. And this week we watched Humanoids from the Deep from 1980 with special guest Erica from the Customers Also Watched podcast. Hello. Hi. Welcome. Thanks for um, having me. <clears throat> this is a crossover of sorts. I was on Customers Also Watched, recorded last week, should be out like the day after this drops. For the movie Muckman, which no one should watch ever. Ever. <laughs> mm, I don't know. Except Kit, who will watch it. <laughs> and then has to sign up for Letterboxd to get that goddamn review How- down. <laughs> How does it compare to, like, Hammerhead Shark Frenzy? Or Mansquito? Oh, Mansquito's way better. Oh, fuck. Okay. <laughs> That's concerning, honestly. The, the most infuriating thing is that it has a higher score than, like, Jason X and Swim Fan what? and, like, Chopping Mall, I think. Yeah, more people need to go in and give that a poor rating to drop it down because it does not deserve its current score. Yeah, it does not <laughs> deserve to be above average. <laughs> no. <laughs> um, all right, so... Uh, let's try this again. That's uh, Erica. Uh, <laughs> what is your experience with humanoids from the deep? <laughs> so I've seen this uh, multiple times before rewatching it for this. And um, yeah, I love this movie. It's um, it's one of those near perfect monster movies for me. Minus, you know, there's a couple things in there that that bother me. But everything that I love about it makes up for that. It's got um, a particular death in it that brings me joy. It's got um, monsters having sex with women on the beach. It's got, you know, chaos at a carnival. It's got a rad ending. It's got carnage and blood and, um, and the ending just not, you know, not being resolved and not like saying, Oh, look, everything's okay. Um, no neat little bow at the end for the audience. So I, I love this movie. I, I could watch it many more times after this. What about you, Kit? Uh, I think I had seen it back in high school using scene very loosely. I had it on in the background, I guess, because on this rewatch, I didn't remember any of this like any of this film but uh i thoroughly enjoyed it on this watch through it's it's that perfect kind of ridiculous yeah i had seen this a handful of times before and always enjoyed it enjoyed it a lot more this time i'm a big fan of the mossy pumpkin head design of the creatures (laughs) and yeah it's just fun but also has some uh, sketchiness to it. Problematic. (laughs) Yeah. But it was also 1980, as opposed to most of the movies we've done on here that have a lot of racism from, like, 2015. 2015, yeah. Uh, All right, so this movie was directed by Barbara Peters. uh, As far as I could tell, the last movie she directed. Uh, Gotta go out on a high note. I mean, yeah. Yeah. I don't <laughs> why why keep going if you directed <laughs> Humanoids from the Deep. <laughs> um written by Frank Arnold, Martin B. Cohen, and William Martin, who was under the pseudonym of Frederick James. And it stars Doug McClure as James Hill and Turkle as Dr. Susan Drake, who was not happy to see the finished result. Um Vic Morrow as Hank Slattery. Cindy Weintraub as Carol Hall and then Anthony Penna as Johnny Eagle um, apparently Ann Turkle was 
signed on with, I guess they were going under the, the name like Beneath the Deep or something like that, that made it sound kind of fancier to try and get bigger <laughs> name people in it. And then like she saw it and Roger Corman jammed all of this fucking nudity because I guess the original scenes would just be like the sea monsters would fucking come up uh, like at the women and it would just like cut to black or you know would just like look away or whatever and Roger Corman was like no we need boobs in this movie so yeah that's not very Corman-esque yeah (laughs) added it and then a bunch of the actors like immediately were just like nope take my names off this and I guess they refused so they're all still attached (laughs) Which is kind of fucked up, but that's sounds like Roger Corman. Uh, Vic Morrow in this movie is extremely unlikable, and I love it as the very racist. <laughs> uh, well, he we'll he on. is, but at the same time, it's like he's that way to establish like who his character is like it's blatantly yeah, yeah, yeah. obvious like who he is but uh, he's also in um that shark movie i told you to watch the last shark yeah i saw a couple people i saw yeah. that come up a couple times looking through the filmography of some of the people in this movie yeah but you know like i said save that one for uh for a rainy day <laughs> yeah when we need a pick me up after yes killer pinata Mm -hmm. Mm. oh god are you guys gonna watch that uh probably eventually (laughs) i had there was a half second where i was like he just made that shit up and then i was like oh fuck no that's a real thing yeah that is a real movie um i need a nap (laughs) (laughs) need to sleep that off so this movie opens with uh, like underwater footage and the title card comes up and does anybody know like the monster in the title like why it is monster and then very tiny humanoids from the deep under it uh, I think it was uh, it was released as monster over in like Europe and UK and depending on what cut of the film it is it'll say humanoids from the deep or monster so like this, I think is the the same uh, version that they use for the Blu-ray, which is the European version. Okay, I guess that makes sense. Yeah, this is the first time I've actually seen that title card. Like I've never seen it that way, so it was new for me. Yeah, I couldn't. I had remember. to pause and make sure I was watching the the <laughs> right thing. I was like, did I did I click play on the wrong movie? I couldn't remember like because I think the last time I seen it, it's probably been like six or seven years now so i was like does this was this always like this it was like this weird like reverse deja vu Mm -hmm. um also just jump in either of you whenever because my notes are extremely scattered for this (laughs) because at the same time not a lot happens but also a lot happens it's just I only have five doctor. notes, so... Well, I usually take, like, extremely <laughs> detailed notes that are just, like, everything that's going on. And this one, I was just like, well, it's like people get attacked, and then there's, like, a festival or a carnival. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Where more people get attacked. Yeah. Um, All right, movie's over. Yep. So, I th- like, we gotta talk about probably mine and Erica's favorite scene on the boat at the beginning. Mm-hmm. When a one of these creatures is caught in a fishing net, and this the guy who is running the boat's son is on there and reading a comic book and not doing whatever he's supposed to be doing, eventually gets knocked in the water and killed, and it rules. <laughs> I had, it's the best. I had, I had <laughs> like one of my favorite things about Erica's podcast is like anytime. They come across a movie or somebody brings up kids. She's just like, oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> I relate 100%. <laughs> I've had, yeah, like anytime there's a kid in a movie or I just, I automatically get annoyed. It takes a lot for me to not hate a child in a movie. And I, I think I have one documented instance in a podcast where I was talking about a movie there. There was a kid in it. And I was like, I didn't hate the kid. 
and that's it. But the only thing I would, I really, and while there is a lot of carnage, like all the underwater deaths, it's just like, you know, blood coming up to the surface. Like, so you don't actually get to see the kid die, which, you know, fine, but (laughs) we'll settle. I'll I'll take it when I can get it. Yeah. I was like, like I was trying to think of kid actors specifically in horror movies that I'm like that like they're not that bad which I feel like better watch out but they're basically teenagers yeah is that kind oh, of you know what the we just talked about it um when we recorded Nathan um the gate I don't hate the kids in the oh, gate yeah 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 the gate rules everybody should yes. watch the gate and then muckman no it's not a kid <laughs> Oh god, you need to watch that tonight because I need to fucking, I need to hear you talk about it. <laughs> I'm I'm gonna need something to bring me down after Mystery Men. So yeah, I do like how they followed up the kid's death with a with a huge boat explosion in this. Like <laughs> the explosions in this movie are insane. Yeah, when Johnny's house gets Molotov cocktailed and just blows up <laughs> like they hit it with a fucking <laughs> missile. <laughs> Uh, lost my mind watching it this time because that was just another thing that like I just like oh wow that is a that is a big explosion from just this bottle of alcohol on fire <laughs> yeah that's how you know it's the good stuff <laughs> yeah it was moonshine apparently um after this kid gets killed and they get some goodwill they immediately ruin it by killing every dog in town <laughs> literally. Yeah, this is the biggest bummer about this movie for me is the the dog the Doug McClure's dog his death and then the other dogs getting killed. It just it's harder for me to um like I get upset when there's animal deaths in a movie. I don't give a fuck about humans. They can all die, but you know, whenever there's a dog especially with like dogs and cats and stuff, I'm like, "Oh." Yeah, same. It's hard. It- happens a lot too in these movies yeah and the thing that hurt, like that pissed me off too about it was um doug mcclure and his wife just go to that like that dance or that um that thing at the, like the town hall or whatever mm-hmm. that same day when their dog just died and i so i was like i know he's supposed to be the hero and he is the hero in the movie but that made me hate him quite a bit because I was like, if my dog just got fucking murdered, I would be a wreck you and would. I would not be going out and smiling <laughs> and, hey, let's have a dance and drink some punch. You wouldn't be at the 75th annual Noyo Salmon Festival? Correct. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I don't know if I would go even if my dog didn't yeah. die, but... Yeah. <laughs> I, like, anytime... I can have it, like... We did the Rage Carry two recently. Which, oh my like, god! I don't know. Have you seen that movie, Erica? I refuse. Okay, so good call. Yes, <laughs> it's like it's not unwatchable. It's just not really good either. But like the dog gets hit by a car in that movie so fucking realistically, Mm-mm. and like and it takes so long. Yeah. Like it just. Like I they, don't know how a scene like that drags, but it dragged. It's maybe one of the worst ones I've seen in a movie as far as, like, like the empathy factor. Like, you're just immediately like, oh, fuck. Like, it's it sucks. Like, at least the stuff in, like, these kind of movies is just, like, I don't know. The first dog in this one sucks because it's, like, essentially looks like it's getting strangled. But the okay, rest... Can we, new topic. Okay. New topic. <laughs> All right, seventy fifth <laughs> annual. The dog in Carry Two lived. Yeah, at least that dog lived. Good. <laughs> Let that dog just lay around for the rest of the movie in one bandage. Um, it is a hero. Yeah, it was the best actor in the movie. Um, so the seventy fifth annual No Yo Salmon Festival. <laughs> um, everybody in town's gathering to hear a fucking speech by. This guy who's trying to open a fishing cannery there, and everybody's basically on board except Johnny, who is the Native American man in this movie that is 
constantly harassed by the white folks. Um, he, I bet, like uh, everybody's dogs in the town get killed, and they all immediately are just like, "Well, it's got to be Johnny," because racism. Um, Johnny shows up eventually at this like get together with his dog that got killed. I am not sure. Like, is it supposed to be that like Slattery did it? Or is it supposed to be the sea creature killed his dog? Slattery. Okay, that's what I thought, but I wasn't sure. Like, if it was supposed to be, like, just more kind of miscommunication type thing between them. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. So that's how I read it, at least. I mean, I don't think I'm wrong, because Slattery didn't seem to be like, what are you talking about? I didn't do anything. Yeah. But, you know. <clears throat> uh, so, yeah, Johnny's dog was killed, presumably by Slattery. They, he basically is like, I'm going to get together all the other Native Americans in town. We're going to file a lawsuit to get our land back and stop this cannery from happening. Um, they kick him out of this get together and immediately get in a fight. A Johnny. wicked fight ensues. <laughs> There's a, a fight between Johnny and Slattery where Johnny's essentially held back the entire time by other people. There is a very awesome scene of a dude like popping his head out of the back of a truck and getting knocked out. <laughs> <laughs> I fucking forgot about that. Uh, it's like one of my favorite parts of this fucking movie. <laughs> he, was, he was making out with his girlfriend and then he like opens the window to like pop his head out and see what was going on and immediately gets punched and <laughs> flies back in. <laughs> oh, it's so good. Um, yeah, so they, they have this fight. Johnny's basically just kicked out and goes back to his house. You get a scene of a couple on the beach being attacked while, uh, Jim and I think Susan are out on a boat and kind of get a sort of glimpse of one of the creatures underwater um, this couple gets attacked, and it's, th it's the first time you see one of the creatures, and I th really one of the first times you see them, like, attack somebody, and it's like, no, this isn't, this is the guy that gets, like, the part of his face ripped off. Yeah. Yeah. I think the next one's the guy that gets his back, like, torn up or whatever. Uh, the gore is not terrible for 1980. Um, that was pretty good for, for no budget, you know, 1980 film. Yeah. I'm curious like, if this was like something else that was kind of added along with the nudity, like by Roger Corman. Cause like the, there's not a lot of like gore in the movie per se. And it's only just, like, when these people kind of get attacked on the beach. I don't think the end has a lot. That, like, I don't know. Like, I, I feel like a lot of the festival stuff just kind of, like, blurred by me this time. Hmm. Um, yeah, I guess there kind of is. And, yeah, I, I guess there's, like, a lot, of, I guess, specifically, like, the sea creatures getting shot and stuff, too. Um... Yeah, so this couple gets attacked on the beach. It's pretty good. And then you get, like, this... No, this isn't... God, I'm fucking completely confused by my notes. <laughs> <laughs> this isn't the woman that they find later, right? That's, like, kind of, like, cocooned in the seaweed. The blonde one, yeah, that's her. That like, is? That's, yeah, like, so they're making out on the beach, and they run off. And then the boyfriend gets, like, dragged into the water and his like face gets torn off and then the creature goes after the blonde girl and rapes her on the beach and we she gets found later like enveloped in seaweed okay i couldn't remember if this was her or the second girl um but yeah so then she'll come back um after that, Slattery is, like, 
trying to convince his crew that they need to stop Johnny from essentially filing a lawsuit against them to stop the cannery and they like their big idea is to essentially firebomb his house <laughs> just fucking murder him <laughs> which <laughs> seems extreme <laughs> um before they do that though is when you get like <laughs> this fucking another scene of like this couple in a tent on the beach that are like to fucking this fucking ventriloquist dummy that the guys use. Oh, that was... <laughs> uh, Cause it yeah, go the on. way it sets up is uh was it you you see the tent and you hear her say like Oh, I need more than the head or something along those lines and it's like what what is this gonna be? And then you just see a he's got a ventriloquist dummy with like half of its head popped out of the carrying case that it's in. And it's just like three minutes of a weird ventriloquist skit. <laughs> like the only line I specifically remember is Oh, show me more than just the head right before they pop That's in and show the fucking dummy just like half of his head popped out of the shirt I I genuinely wasn't sure if I was like on drugs or not whenever that happened <laughs> I mean I feel safe to say probably yes <laughs> I was completely sober but it did not feel like it in that moment this I scene, do love a good sexual innuendo so yes, you know this whole scene is pretty great <laughs> <laughs> I also like that, like, after he doesn't have the dummy in his hand, that when the creature attacks the tent, it sh shows another quick shot of the dummy as its eyes turn to look at the fucking creature. <laughs> <laughs> uh, there's also, like, you could tell the scenes after she leaves the tent were definitely shot completely after the movie because it looks a lot lower quality. I guess I could have just been the print, but it looks... This is one of the scenes that, like, the first time I watched it, I was like, oh, this kind of stands out a little bit. And then reading the stuff about Roger Corman, like, adding stuff, I was like, okay, this makes sense now. Mm -hmm. Um, So, after that, as you get Slattery and his crew boating up to Johnny's house and firebombing it with a fucking Molotov cocktail that explodes a whole block of these woods... Um, as like as they're trying to put the fire out at Johnny's house, uh, I forget the name of the couple that are with them. Either of you know by any chance? I didn't write it down. Yeah, I didn't either. I know Kit doesn't know. Nope, um, I don't. I can't keep up with names. <laughs> so like, two of the other people from town that are kind of like helping Johnny out are there. They're trying to put the fire out as the, the dude gets pulled into the water by one of these sea creatures and is attacked and is able to like kind of fight his way out a little bit to the point that Johnny's able to run down and save him. Um, but he gets mauled up pretty good and they have to, <laughs> but, <laughs> That's a really good way to phrase it. <laughs> it is mauled up pretty good. Uh, uh, they end up bringing this dude back to town with... Oh no, the sea creature's body gets pulled away. Um, but this is when, like, everybody else in town kind of is hearing about these creatures. And I gotta say, are pretty immediately like accepting of the idea that there are these humanoid sea creatures attacking their town. Uh, I feel like I would immediately be like, no, this makes zero sense. Yeah, there's like no skepticism at all. I'm just like, all right, well, what do we do? I, I've, I feel like Slattery maybe isn't fully on board, but it's just like, well, this covers up, because he's immediately like, oh yeah, they firebombed Johnny's house and then killed all of our dogs. So it just kind of like gets him off the hook for blowing up Johnny's house. Um, 
But after that, Johnny, Hank, and Susan... No, not Hank. Uh, Jim go looking for... The, like to see if they can find one of these creatures. And this is when they come across... Uh, the woman from earlier that is now like cocooned in seaweed. Uh, it's... I don't know why, but like the the visual of that I kind of enjoyed. Like just... I like the idea of them like cocooning this person that's like... Ted, you know supposed to be pregnant with their kid like in seaweed I thought that was like a cool idea um I think after that is when you go to the science lab where Susan is yeah, yeah explaining I get like essentially like her idea of these these creatures and like how they reproduce and they're like coming to land to I guess I don't know this was all this is all kit science corner shit that I was checked out of <laughs> <laughs> um, is it so is it supposed to be that like they're trying to evolve their species yeah. I believe so okay that's I guess that makes sense I am on like four hours of sleep so today's mm-hmm. watch was <laughs> very much a blur for me um i think so after that after the science lab stuff is when they go to like the festival right yeah like they they've they've captured a dead one or they've they've shot it and they've ki- shot and killed one and they've performed their Pseudo autopsy, uh, pseudo autopsy on it and then they bring that to the festival and show everyone and that's when just like bedlam ensues yeah like my my only my last two notes are just festival slash havoc <laughs> yeah <laughs> um this fest- like what's what I thought like I think is interesting about this festival scene is I guess they only had one really good creature suit and then two that were only kind of filmable from certain angles, and they pull it off extremely well by making it look like there's so many of them there. Yeah. Um, you get. All- I I appreciate that they tried to do a little diversity with them too because there's that one like humanoid that'll pop up with the really long arms yeah like like all the other ones have normal like in proportion arms and there's the one with like the freddy krueger in the alleyway arms like (laughs) chasing people around uh speaking of right before we recorded i was watching uh shutter and it was just like put on shutter tv and nightmare on elm street 4 was on I've got it on in the background right now. <laughs> of course you do. <laughs> um, so, basically, these creatures are just fucking wreaking havoc on this festival, like, trying to pull, like, women into the water and kids for some reason that I don't want to go into. Um, basically, it's just all, like, just bedlam. And... For some reason, like the only person like not at like in town is Jim's wife. Yeah, left her alone with the baby back at the uh, back at their house, and she holds her own, you know, against the um, the humanoids that attack her in her house. And good for her. Yeah, it's uh, I like the scenes with her at the house, like trying to fight off like the three or whatever that are there. Mm-hmm. and like stabbing the one in the hand a bunch of times and that was the first time I, f- I remember getting like a shot of the one that's got like as Kit put it the Freddy Krueger <laughs> arms <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah um, but yeah basically they just like the town fights off all of these sea creatures and everything is quote unquote okay What? why didn't no. anyone try and shoot them in the head <laughs> Well, because then, then the scene ends more quickly. Yeah. 
Oh. Okay. <laughs> the runtime. Movie logic. <laughs> It's like these things have their brains hanging out of their heads. What? <laughs> Seems like a pretty good target. But no, you're right. I'd get less bedlam that way. <laughs> the movie's just like 45 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> um. But yeah, like so, it seems like everything's kind of sort of fine. Like they fight off the creatures or whatever, and then you get. The last scene of the woman from earlier in the hospital giving birth, but it instead rips through her stomach, xenomorph style, and this weird humanoid, human looking baby pops out, and the humanoid, noid. human, humanoid. Um, but yeah, I'm kind of surprised this movie never had a sequel it seems like it would have been primed for one yeah i know there was like apparently a remake in like 96 that i never want to watch i've never seen it no i think it was like made for tv so i can't imagine it's very good yeah um yeah this movie rules yeah that baby at the end looks a lot like um if you've ever seen uh it's alive yeah. or the unborn it's kind of like that and yeah it just chestburster style just fucking rips its way out of her stomach and i'm just like all right i like that kid <laughs> <laughs> that kid's all right in my book <laughs> yeah it gave me very it's alive vibes uh, just by its look but it's like I I fucking I love the ending of this movie. I like movies mm-hmm. that end with like kind of like that like a cliffhanger of sorts where you don't. It's obviously it's not over, but then you never get any sort of like re- resolution from it. Right. Uh, but yeah, this movie is good, and everybody should watch it. And not Muckman. <laughs> um. So. Yeah, like I said, I was on Customers Also Watched, and I've talked about it on here before. Like, I've shouted it out. It's one of my favorite podcasts. Like, I have... Thank you. Yeah. I have, like, (laughs) three podcasts specifically that I'm like... Usually, I'll let stuff kind of build up for a little bit. Like, oh, listen, like, I'll wait for, like, five episodes and binge it, like, at work or whatever. But, like, Customers Also Watched is one of the three specifically that like the day it drops i'm like gotta listen to it (laughs) um i love it it's great do you want to tell people kind of how you came up with it like what it's about etc yeah sure so um so customers also watched um i do a few different things but the main thing is uh covering movies strictly on amazon prime um basically following a rabbit trail of movies from that list of uh, suggested movies that come up. So I started with one that was on my personal watch list back in January. And from there, I would just go to the customer's watch list for that movie, pick a movie, rinse and repeat. And I've gone through, I think, 16 or 17 movies by now um, doing that. And it's taken me to some weird places and (laughs) some not so good places, but some really good places. So, um, the nature of the algorithm beast i suppose um i also do bonus episodes every now and then um kind of a variety of i did a interview with a director once um did um most recent bonus episode was uh with my friend lance where we um, both did this june exploitation challenge and talked about like 60 different movies that we watched for that and that was a lot of fun um, but the highlight seemingly for everybody, because three people in the last week have told me how much they love Rebecca, and not me, is uh, the mini episodes, which cover, um, right now they're covering entire horror franchises, but um, we're branching out, and, and basically the premise of those is that Rebecca hasn't really seen anything growing up, and she's would, would always say, I don't understand that reference, and so... Um, we do many episodes. She always gets homework and she has to watch the first one and then I catch her up on the rest of them. And, um, it's a delight. 
to, you know, have her talk about those movies. I've seen them for the first time as an adult. So, and they seem to be everyone's favorite. So there's that too. <laughs> They're all good. We love you, Erica. Um, thank you. I will say I did <laughs> thoroughly enjoy the June exploitation one. Oh, thank you. Um, it, I'm making a list of movies I need to watch based off that. Nice. Um, also, tomorrow, the Hellraiser bonus episode drops, and I can't wait. <laughs> <laughs> so, Kit, I don't think, knows what a podcast is. Uh, I don't think, I think he said once that he's never listened to a podcast I, before. <laughs> Jesus. I, I record, like, three, and, <laughs> like, that's it. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, like she said, like, the ones she does where she kind of, like, Rebecca has to watch the first in a franchise and then like explain it. And then Erica will, and like, will go over kind of like the rest of the franchise. It kind of highlights and lowlights and all that kind of stuff. And, you know, they've done like critters nightmare on Elm street, um, leprechaun. Yeah. The idea, the hellraiser, the, uh, yeah, the hellraiser is going to be a wild one. <laughs> <laughs> like just the quotes you've been posting on Instagram from that episode it's like for the last week i'm just like i can't wait <laughs> i uh i overshared a little bit in that in that episode so i i actually contemplated cutting cutting a big <laughs> chunk of it out and i was like nope you know what nobody knows who i am so <laughs> i'm just gonna fucking leave it in there and... <laughs> why even have a podcast if you can't overshare from time right. to time <laughs> um but yeah so Based on how Erica's podcast runs, we're going to have her pick our next movie from the Humanoids from the Deep Customers Also Watch list. Yay! And I never looked to see what was on it. I have no idea what this is going to be. And I am on pins and needles. <laughs> oh, boy. All right. Hang on. Let me pull it up real quick. What if it's just Muckman again? No. <laughs> Well, like, I'm gonna buy, I'm gonna go by the rules here. So if you guys have seen it, you need to let me know because then I'm not gonna pick it. Like I want this to be something that neither of you have seen before. That, like that'll probably be more of a problem for Kit than me. Okay. <laughs> I have like a good <laughs> like stretch. I have like a good 13 years where I barely watched horror movies because my ex was just like terrified of them. So I only really got to watch stuff when she was just kind of not around. Oh. So. I'm, this podcast is me catching up on a lot of stuff that ended up just being garbage because we have terrible ideas. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I live in trash. So. All right. Okay. So customers who also suffered. Uh, let's see. <laughs> what do we got on the list here? I've got uh, Species, The Awakening, which I did not know existed until just now. Is that, wait, is that like a a fourth sequel to the species uh, movies? it's got to be because yeah. species three uh, yeah Ugh. i'm not going to give you guys a species <laughs> movie i'm going to try here's the thing is i i appreciate your love for bad movies but i'm going to do my best to actually pick the what i think is the best movie on here like the next movie on the list is killer mermaid i'm not picking that for you guys <laughs> is that something you guys would pick on your own we'll add that, so we'll add if that, i add that to oh. our uh God damn it. Our, our dead end list. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So if I have the power, I'm going to do the best that I can here. So, um, all right. We've got School Spirit, 1985. Um, Zombie Lake, 1980. Uh, that is leaving Prime in like five days, though. So I'll yeah. skip that one. Breeders. Um, an alien life force descends to Earth in the form of spores and use. Oh, I've seen this. I own this. Yeah, I think I've seen Breeders, too. <laughs> oh, yeah, I own that. Okay. Just looked at my shelf. I'm like, don't I own this? Yeah, I do. Okay. Um, Forbidden World, um, 1982. Have either of you seen that? I don't think so. Okay. So, on planet Zarbia, an experimental life form, Subject 20, has been created by an elite group of researchers in hope of preventing a galactic food crisis. Uh, however, when Subject 20 becomes deadly, the best troubleshooter in the galaxy is called in to investigate. Um, that one's a fun campy one. I will think about that one for you guys. All right. Um, we've got the nest, nineteen eighty-eight. You know, big bug movie. I've seen that one. You've seen it? Okay. I, I own the book for that one. Oh well, there you go. 
uh, The Sisterhood. Either of you? No. I haven't heard of that one. Okay, the year is 2021 AD, so hey, two years from now. Uh, <laughs> women have been enslaved by a brutal army of men. Oh, well, so I guess Trump's still president. Yep. Um, <laughs> A uh, brutal army of men who have survived the nuclear holocaust. Their only hope for freedom is in the hands of a nomadic band of fierce she-warriors, the Sisterhood. Possibility. Uh, Ladies of the House 2015. Nope, I am not picking a 2000s. Oh, fuck yeah, Incub- the Incubus is on here, 1982. Have either of you seen that? Uh-uh. I don't think so. Oh, hell yeah. All right. This movie fucking rules. Um <laughs> God, who's in this? Uh, John Cassavetes is in it. He was the husband in Rosemary's Baby. Yeah. Okay. And um, fucking uh, Bruce Dickinson from Iron Maiden is in it. <laughs> what? Yeah. I don't think he's credited. I haven't seen it in a really long time. But yeah, uh, I'm not even going to look at the rest of the list. I'm not even going to like go in between two. Incubus is on here. The, the Incubus, sorry, is on here. 1982. That's my pick for you guys. All right. I got to write that down. Deal. What did you say, 1982 or 92? 82. I would not pick a 90s movie for you. Uh, so just a <laughs> short description of it. Um, from the best-selling book by Ray Russell, a small-town doctor and sheriff join forces to track down a vicious sex killer uh, who may be the indestructible incarnation of a demon spawned from hell. Oh, and they even mention it in the description here. Features an uncredited performance by Bruce Dickinson, Iron Maiden, <laughs> and his band Samson. Nice. <laughs> Shit. So that'll be... I have to look, I like to look at our calendar. I think that'll be two weeks because so this episode will drop the second, and then I think we're gonna do an episode on uh, it chapter two, which will actually end up being our the week of let's see our one year anniversary. Oh, Nobody tells you how difficult the uh, podcast calendars are. <laughs> yeah, because it was like, I can't even imagine what Erica records them like two or three weeks in advance, something like that sometimes, and ours is yeah. like a week in advance, and I'm like, what day is it? Now, what are we watching in two days? So this will, yeah, this will either be next week or the week after, depending on if we all actually go see it. Um, but yeah, so. I'm just going to go ahead and watch it as soon as possible. Yeah, I will too. I'll, I'll watch it again. I'll watch, <laughs> I always try and watch once and like take notes and then watch just like a second time. But then I forget all of it like 10 minutes after I watch them. (laughs) Because I've worked night shifts for like 18 years and my memory is shot. (laughs) Um, But yeah, that'll be The Incubus with pre-Brexit Bruce Dickinson. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Alright, so go ahead and you can tell everybody kind of where to follow. Customers also watched. All that kind of jazz. Uh, yeah, so you can find the, the podcast on any podcatcher, uh, Facebook or Instagram under customers also watched. Uh, I'm the most active on Instagram. I rarely post on Facebook. Just it's there because it is. Um, uh, Twitter is CAW podcast. I am very bad at Twitter. I just joined it like this year and I. I don't understand it, and so uh, I just basically post when there's new episodes. So if you really want to stay up to date, then Instagram is your is your best bet. Uh, and then also on Letterboxd is my username. There is also watched, and that's not just for the podcast. That is for you know the movies I'm watching for the podcast, but also everything else that I'm watching. So uh, you can follow me on there. Yeah, follow her on Letterboxd and Instagram. Letterboxd, because you can watch her get outraged at movies she has to watch when she reviews them. (laughs) And and Instagram is kind of like, Instagram is the same for us. Like, I post a lot on my regular Twitter, but I almost, I just pretty much only post when we drop stuff on the podcast one, because it's, I don't know, it's just, Twitter's a fucking nightmare. Um, Yeah. (laughs) Instagram is fun. It's always delightful when there are cats. (laughs) Um, yeah, go, I, I highly suggest cause like you said, you started in January, so you're probably like what? 30 ish episodes in maybe yeah, something like that mid twenties. I think it, uh, if, I don't like, know if you like, 
it's a part a podcast you're gonna want to start from the first episode as opposed to like i know people that'll be like i'm gonna listen to the current one and work my way backwards and i'm just like you are killing me um, <laughs> but because like you get to listen to the journey of like here's this movie i wanted to watch now here's like a good movie and here's maybe a not so good movie and here's this complete trash movie how am i going to get out of this cycle of trash movies and like <laughs> <laughs> it's such a good concept especially you know you just watch it slowly spiral out of control yeah yeah there was like a like three episode arc where it was all shaw brothers movies that you were just like i gotta get out of this or i'm just gonna become a shaw <laughs> brothers podcast <laughs> I mean, to be fair, like, I loved all of those movies, but I was like, okay, I, I like you said, I can't have it turn into yeah. a Shaw Brothers podcast. So I was like, all right, I, I love these. I will watch more of these on my own, but I need to change directions here. So, yeah. And then, like, the one I was on was like, well you, were, well, you were in like a, a kind of, arc of just sci-fi stuff and you're like all right i want to get back to like horror and the only movie on the list was muckman from like <laughs> 2009 or some shit that then just put you in this weird bubble of like big monster movies <laughs> yeah it was all like eco horror and bigfoot movies and i was just like oh god but i mean luckily there was a couple things on there and um yeah so um i uh I, I don't want to spoil the the one, um, but yeah, I've recorded that that next one that I picked with uh, when you were on the episode, and uh, I, I I'll spoil it a little bit, but I've gotten to after I got to the list for that one, I've gotten to a very good place. Ah, nice. So I'm I'm happy right now. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like really, you're, little victories. If anybody listens to this the day it drops, then yours the day it drops. You're only spoiling like a day because this will drop I think the day before. Mm. your episode so right um yeah listen to customers also watched it is excellent and follow them i follow erica's customer also watched all that stuff she said you can follow us on twitter at i hope you suffer and instagram at i hope you suffer podcast um i am in the process of putting together like a giveaway package for whenever we hit a thousand followers and I posted like Ooh. right before we started recording, like one of the items that I'm, I have from my collection is the 30th anniversary, like 10 reissue of the demon soundtrack. Um, Why are yeah, you so giving questions. that away? I got, I'm, <laughs> I am in the process of probably moving to another state next year and mm. I have to just, whittle down everything <laughs> hmm. so is there any way i can win it no i mean because i saw it i wanted it <laughs> you follow the podcast right <laughs> how <laughs> shitty would that be <laughs> um yeah i mean i don't know i'm at a point where i'm just like, everything's just fucking going digital from like my music stuff so hmm. um i am not getting rid of my movies though stuff is okay. going with me <laughs> okay um yeah so either next week will be it chapter two with katie or the incubus depending on when all three of us can go see it um other than that i got nothing thanks for joining us erica yeah, yeah thanks for having we'll, me i'm sure do it again at some point yeah and Again, everybody go listen to Customers Also Watched because it is excellent. And watch Muckman. No. <laughs> no, stop it. Everybody get on Letterboxd and give Muckman a half-star review. Yes, please. Get it down from a goddamn 2.9. <laughs> I, I, I looked earlier and saw it was at a 2.9 and was flabbergasted. It's Every review, too, is like, this movie was terrible, but I watched it three. And I'm like, what? <laughs> yeah. Oh god. I thought my standards were low for film. I I'm, I'm not kidding like it it's at least in the bottom 3 of movies I've watched for podcasts. It Fuck. might be number 2 behind Tsunami. I've, I've thrown some real shit at you it's, over the course of this podcast. It's so. <laughs> it's definitely not worse than Tsunami. It's 
Yeah, sorry. It's it's like it's a tie, if not worse, than Nudist Colony of the Dead. Ooh. It's just it, yep. yeah, it's you'll hear it. You can listen to it tomorrow if you're listening to this to the day this dropped. It's it's real bad. Um <laughs> Alright. I hope you suffer, but why? But why?